I moved into a brand new apartment a month ago with my fiancé. We have never experienced anything paranormal and I was a huge skeptic prior to these events. So the weird stuff started about two weeks ago. The very first thing that started happening was something weird with our hangers. We have a room connected to the bedroom that serves as a walk-in closet and laundry room. We noticed sounds in there when we were in other parts of the apartment. We started finding metal hangers snapped from the top with the clothes we hung up on the other side of the room. I just assumed that they were cheap or that we were hanging clothes that were too heavy. The laundry room door had been shutting on its own, but I assumed it was from the air pressure or something similar. Then the next thing was the lights. At first it was subtle and I thought my eye was twitching or something. About a week ago it was so bad some nights we would be in the dark for a second or two before they came back on. I asked my property manager about it and they said that they would check into it. They called me at work to tell me that everything seemed to be okay with the light fixtures and wiring. Then the really weird stuff started happening. Last week we started hearing louder noises. We were in the shower together and heard loud banging from the bedroom. There is a door that leads to a back deck on the second story so I immediately got out soaking wet and grabbed my gun. I went everywhere around the home and went outside and saw nothing. I got back in the shower with my gun in the bathroom and we heard it again but a little quieter. We quickly finished washing and just ignored it for the rest of the night. That night we started hearing sounds when we were in the bedroom. We have been so paranoid we keep all the doors locked and lock the bedroom door before going to sleep. We heard sounds coming from the living room and from the laundry room but I just kept telling myself it must be my neighbors. I believed that until one day we were in the living room and heard yet another sound from the laundry room. We went to look and a pair of pants my fiancé had been missing for around a week was sitting on the floor away from the closet area. I tossed them against the wall and they were laying again while my fiancé was in the living room and she said that was the exact sound she heard. That made me rethink things a bit because I had just finished cleaning and I remember sweeping that exact spot where the pants ended up. That night we kept hearing more and more noises and finally started thinking it might be something more than just coincidences and loud neighbors. At around 2am we went into the bedroom and I jokingly said out loud, If there's a spirit in here, give me a sign. Then I said, I don't care if you're a little punk. At the time I was pretty confident that it was no big deal and I was trying to calm my fiancé down. After that, we noticed parts of the apartment were starting to get really cold. My fiancé and I both kept getting goosebumps for no apparent reason, and she said that she felt a feeling of dread. She was so scared, so we decided to take a drive around the lake near us to calm down and maybe grab some food, and everything changed after that. When we left, I felt so drained, and I was really tired, so I pulled over to let her drive my car. We were going down a road in Carter County, Tennessee, for reference. My fiancé lived down that road for a while and knows the area well. She has driven the road hundreds of times with no incident. We were pretty calmed down at this point and we were having a nice talk when the main reason for this post happened. I saw something I can only describe as a white and grey shape with two distinct short legs and something flowing between them coming flying out of the woods on the driver's side towards us. I yelled, Stop! Please stop! because I thought we were about to run an animal or something over. Even though I was looking at it, I couldn't make out any details like a face or head, but when it got close to the car, I noticed it was much bigger than I originally thought. I drive a sedan, and when it made it to the driver's side window, it was slightly taller than the car. I noticed its feet were always straight up and down like it wasn't using them to move. I was bracing for impact, but it never happened. I turned around and the thing was gone. I really believe that I would have seen it after we passed it because even though it was dark, the thing seemed to kind of glow. It was very white when I first saw it but kind of grey when it got to the car. My fiancé and I sat in silence for a second before I said something like, please tell me you just saw that. My fiancé said she did and wanted to wait to talk about it because she had a really bad feeling. We went down the road a bit before she told me her point of view. She said she was driving and just felt an awful feeling of terror and got goosebumps before it happened. She said she never saw it coming out of the woods but she mentioned that she felt that she couldn't look at it. 
She said she never looked directly at it, but when it was about to hit the driver's side window, it was that fast coming out of the woods from beside us. It took up the entire window with the grayish-white color. She said she heard a faint growl and a high-pitched screaming sound at the same time. She said it got to the window for a brief moment, stopped and stared into the car. I did not hear anything, but I was a little further away than her. The thing never hit our car, and I turned around, but literally as soon as I repositioned my body, it was gone. I thought for sure we were going to wreck because the thing was so big. I looked right at the thing, but it was so fast and so strange that I still have no idea what I saw. We checked the time after we made it to the main road, and it was 3.20 a.m., so it was probably around 3.10 to 3.15 a.m. when it happened. We turned around and went back down that road four times in a row, hoping to see a big white dog or really anything that it could have been. We saw nothing at all. We noticed that it was near an abandoned trailer and that the bank that the thing would have come down was really steep, so we dismissed the idea that it was a person in some sort of a costume. When we got home that night, we just had a terrible feeling of anxiety that night. We heard noises, but we tried to play music to cover up the sounds and we waited until daylight broke to go to bed. We were woken up again around 7am from banging right above us, even though we were on the top floor. My fiancé has been very upset and says she feels watched when she is alone at home, but now she feels it when I am home as well. I don't know where to go from here, but I want it to stop. Any advice on what is going on or how to stop this would be greatly appreciated. In a previous thread I just posted, I discussed a very strange happening at my parents' house around 10 years ago. This instance is from around 2 years ago in mid-2016. I started working as a civilian in the MOD, which meant I spent 6 months living on an RAF base, Odaham to Chinooks. For around a week, I woke up every single morning at the same time. I can't remember which hour it was, but it was on the hour either between 1am or 3am dead on. I know because I would text my girlfriend daily as it happened, complaining that I was woken up again at the exact same time, and I remember by the end of it, there was a sort of running joke, yep, right on schedule, 3am wide awake. This happened for two weeks, I sometimes would hear a noise in my room from the cupboard, the sink started dripping one day. This was a very old building, World War I era, 1925 built and is used to film scenes of Downton Abbey, etc. On the final day this happened, my TV turned on to a terrestrial TV channel. I had no aerial in it, there was no aerial around, it was literally a shell that I plugged my memory stick into to play whatever films I downloaded onto it. There was 100% no way that any sort of TV signal could be getting into this old style flat screen that required an aerial. I got up groggily and turned it off. I went back to bed, shut my eyes, and the sound of static started coming out of the TV, getting louder and louder as if the volume was being increased. The TV screen was off. I literally ran up and ripped the plug from the socket and it stopped. As I got into bed though and turned my light off, I noticed the red on and off LED at the bottom of the set flicking. I texted my girlfriend and told her what was going on and laughed to myself when I noticed the timing, 3 a.m., as I went back to sleep. As my time on that base went on, I got more and more edgier and nervous around the wardrobe. I don't know why. Nothing happened to it, but I remember constantly having to check that nobody was in there. Like the longer my stay on the base went, the more paranoid I got that somebody was in there. I've always suffered from nightmares, but never really had any issues with sleepwalking. However, since around two to three years ago, I have been having close-to-home nightmares, in which the only way I can describe it is an out-of-body experience similar to that of the terrible film Insidious. While sleeping in my nightmare, I would feel myself wake up and move out of bed in a very floating feeling. I would move around my house. Suddenly, they started to include beings, manifestations, things, darkness. 
It was almost as if these things that felt pure malevolent were sensing a human in their plane and were attracted to me. I have never been able to look in a mirror when in this nightmare, strangely enough, as if a strong magnet is repelling me. But the end is always the same. In the nightmare, I escape from these things and I feel like a vacuum force sucking me into my body and I open my eyes and I'm stood outside where I had escaped to. This started to happen in my parents' house, which is featured in a previous post, one that sticks in my mind and still haunts me. I wake up in my bed to go downstairs and... The house is exactly how it was, physically, same lighting and the lighting was in the same places it always is. I moved downstairs and saw my parents were still in the lounge watching TV. I went into the kitchen when I felt the whole room go cold enough to see your breath and the lights in this place were dimmed a lot. Then I saw down the hallway, three dark shadowy manifestations that had a white wispy glow behind where a face would be about one foot off the floor floating through the room towards me. They felt pure natural evil, like the lion naturally being drawn to the gazelle as prey. Everything felt slowed down as they were just sucking out my life force, no other way to describe it, and I was feeling groggy. I remember trying to snap myself out of this and made a slow and stumbling attempt to get out of the house. I got outside into the garden and woke up physically in the garden. Since then, I have lived in a few different houses. I consistently have these out-of-body experience dreams where I wake up and there is a presence in my room or at my window attached to me and drawn to whatever part of me is out of the body. I moved into a new flat last month with my girlfriend. First week we stayed there at her parents whilst I decorated with my brother. I had an experience. I was walking around my flat, asleep, and it was chilly and my brother was on his phone in a spare bed unaware I was there. I was trying to turn the lights on but I was physically unable to and then I heard a female disembodied voice shout whispering, Hello? As I know someone is there can hear me. Then my brother looked up and got out of bed and checked who was there out of the door where I was. I woke up in my own bed and my brother asked if I had heard it too. He had heard footsteps and whispering which stopped outside his door and didn't go anywhere. I was ten and my sister three, and being we were in a two-bedroom home and girls, we shared a room. Now, my sister and I slept on a bunk bed and my sister had issues sleeping alone so she always wanted me to sleep with her on the lower bunk. Now, the bunk beds didn't have side railings, and my mom not wanting us to fall out of bed, she bought side railings and put them on our beds. So, one night here I am sleeping on the bottom bunk with Sis, who is snuggled close to me but by the railing and I am up against the wall. I was sleeping facing the wall and my sister behind me, and for some odd reason, I felt like I had to turn over and look behind me. When I did, close to the railing, I saw my mom staring at us with this big smile on her lips. I didn't think anything of it. I mean, my mom always checked in on me and specifically my little sister at night. So I simply say, oh, hey mom. Then I roll back over to go back to sleep. Not even one second from seeing her, I remember I had to tell my mom something I'd forgotten to tell her I needed for school. So I roll back over knowing I'm going to see my mom there and she's gone. So I think, oh, I guess I'll catch her down the hall. So I get out of bed and head to my door and down the hall. Mom's not there. I comically thought, wow, she's fast. She must be in her room, which was right beside mine. So I go into the room and my mother and father are dead asleep, snoring away. Then it dawns on me, wait, mom couldn't have been that fast and already been dead asleep like that. The hair stands up on the back of my neck, and I back out of my parents' room and go to my sister, whom, by the way, I am very protective of and crawl into bed, push her to the wall, and I sleep where she was because, in my mind, I am rethinking of what just happened, and I don't want my sister near the railing. Now, as I go over the image of my mother or what I thought was my mom, nothing was off. It was my mom except one thing. That smile of hers was wide, very wide. It was as if though it started from her right ear and went all the way to her left ear. 
It was unnatural and then I thought of how fast she had disappeared. I looked to my sister who was sound asleep. I knew that wasn't my mom I just saw and my stomach turned. I think for what seemed like an hour I just stared over the railing watching in case I was going to see it again. Thankfully I didn't. I bundled my sister up with her favorite blankets she slept with and snuggled with her put my big blankets over her heads like you do as a kid to feel safe from what goes bump in the night and with some time went back to sleep. Next morning I didn't tell my parents anything as again figured they just think I dreamt it. I promise you I didn't and so I kept this to myself for a very long time. I didn't tell my mom this story until I was in my late 20s and apparently she wasn't shocked and had her own stories to tell. I wasn't alone like I had thought I was. I would like to think of myself as a little grounded when it comes to paranormal things. I don't just jump to the conclusion that what went bump under my radar was something unworldly. So I have to say I have gone over and over in my head with the details of the story I'm about to share and I can promise you, the conclusion I came up with did in fact happen. A little backstory. Where this story takes place in a rural place in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, it is a place that is one-sided suburban and the other is lots of trees, wildlife and marshy area basically a small island and it is also known to have native origins here. Now where I lived had no street lights, nothing lit the streets except the moon and the stars. It is really pretty at night because you're able to see the stars clearly as long as you don't mind battling mosquitoes. It was summer and I was seven, it was eight o'clock in my bedtime. It was also a school night so off to bed I went, of course after the ritual of brushing my teeth and hair and so on. Now I remember staring at my large bay windows from my bed that only had pink sheer curtains and noted how bright the moon was and how it made the tree shadows seem eerie, but I was used to it and I went to sleep. Now time passed, I honestly don't know what time it was but I found myself slowly waking up to what was maybe the middle of the night with this uneasy feeling like I just couldn't get comfortable and that feeling that I was being watched. I didn't understand why I was feeling this at first and it didn't help that I was a little groggy. I don't know what made me look up from my bed into the window but I did and why I was feeling the way I was was frighteningly answered. I saw through my window an imposing figure in a black silhouette. It had to be tall as my window was high up on the wall, broad shoulders and glowing eyes. Now the moon was full and bright that night, so this thing's eyes could have been glowing because of the light of the moon, but its eyes were red. I also noticed what looked to be pointed ears on its head, but as a child I was frozen in fear, thinking, my god, some person is outside staring at me and I should scream for my mom. But it was as though my vocal cords in my brain were a couple who had their first fight and just weren't talking to each other. All I could do is grab my covers and pull them as far as I could up over my nose and only my eyes could be seen. I mean, after all, covers are more powerful things for kids and they save you from the boogeyman, right? So, at this point, I am a bundle of emotions and trying not to wet myself. Another thought comes to my mind. My window is a good maybe ten or feet so off the ground and this person is standing full form. I can see its waist all the way to the top of the bed. Then as this realization hits and the question is, is this a person, was answered. This thing turns its head to show a long snout, sort of like a wolf, but not quite. That's when my bladder decided to say, I'm out, all yours buddy. I won't lie, it took a lot not to wet the bed even though my bladder was very willing to do so. It felt like an eternity as this thing just stared at me through the window and the fear I was going to be eaten like Red Riding Hood. Finally, my brain and vocal cords seem to make up, and right as I'm about to scream for my mom, the thing backs up and runs off. It didn't make a noise or anything, it was just gone. I laid there in shock, thinking, did this happen? Did I just see what I saw? I really need to use the bathroom, but I'm not getting up. Like I said, lots of stuff went through my head, and as weird as it was, I didn't call my mom or dad out of fear that they wouldn't believe me. 
I didn't sleep well that night and when I did was with the covers over my head. I don't know what I saw but I thought maybe I dreamed it until I decided the next morning before school. I checked my window and the grass my father hadn't weed whacked yet was crushed by something very large and heavy. I would love to hear from anyone else who may have had similar stories like this as I'm not quite sure what this thing was but no, it was something I'll never forget. So the four people in question are my big brother Max, my little brother Ron, my husband Brian, and me. The pharmacy in question is very small, maybe 500 square feet, with a couple aisles that are short enough to see over and an open pharmacy area next to the only cash register. The front is made up completely of windows and the shop is in the middle of a plaza. Everything can be seen outside and there is nowhere to immediately turn or hide. There is only one door to enter and exit from. I am the only one of this group who knew about the theory of dimensional jumping. Although I have talked to Brian about it, he had never taken it very seriously. Something he'll joke that we must have slipped dimensions when we remembered a conversation differently. Ron and Max have never heard of the phenomena and are classic skeptics regarding anything of that nature. I myself have never experienced anything to this degree. All that said, here's what went down. Ron, Brian, and I walk into this pharmacy and wait by the computer. No one sees Max come in. After a minute or so, all three of us see Max outside the window, about 15 feet away. He's knocking on the glass, dramatically waving his arms in a what-are-you-doing type of way, and anxiously waving us towards him. We're confused, but I offer to see what he wants and exit the store. Despite seeing him peripherally standing outside the windows the entire time, the second I walk out the only door I find that he's suddenly not there. No one is outside the shop or the neighboring shop's stall. I yell out, Max, Max, a few times, but no response. My little sister and her boyfriend come out of the shop and walk toward me. I ask if they've seen Max, but they haven't. I don't leave the front of the shop at all during this time. I decide that he must have been impatient and ran off somewhere, willfully ignoring how impossibly fast he would have had to have been running, so I went back into the pharmacy. As I walk in, I am baffled to find Max walking towards Ron and Brian. I walk up to him and ask, What did you need? Also ignoring the fact that there was no way he could have came inside without passing me. Max looks at me quizzically and asks me what I'm talking about. Ron and Brian and I spend the next couple of minutes explaining what happened, but Max insists that he was inside with us the entire time. At this point, we're all suspicious of each other pulling some sort of stupid prank, but no one buckles. Max in particular loves messing with people, but could not keep a straight face to save his life. And as we talked and thought about it, we all realized that, prank or no, we simply could not explain how Max could have disappeared and snuck inside so instantaneously. We also considered the fact that it might have been someone else at the window, though we were the only ones in the shop. But the possibility of another six-foot-tall flamboyantly gay man with a pompadour, purple short shorts, and a bright blue tank top waving directly at us seems really very slim. All three of us saw him and identified him as Max without question. This happened about a week ago now, and I'm still wondering and hoping that other Max is doing okay. So to start off, I need to give a little backstory. Growing up, I lived in the country and we had this old couple who lived next to us that were in their 80s. When I was 21, my neighbor's wife had passed away in the house one night. They had no children and no one to really help take care of the old man after his wife passed away. So family friends of my neighbors came to me and asked if I would stay at the old man's house at night just to make sure he got to bed okay and to keep an eye on the place. This came at the perfect time because I had just gotten into the nursing program and they were offering me a pretty good amount of money just to sleep at his house. I decided to take the job. I remember my first couple of nights were pretty creepy. I had to walk through the woods about a half mile to get to my neighbor's and then walk into his pitch black house and find my way around using the light of my phone. 
After a while, I got used to it, and it was a pretty easy job. A few creepy things did happen in the house. My neighbors were in his 90s now and would wander the house at night and talk to his wife. Sometimes I would wake up and he would be standing next to my bed, whispering things, and it would freak me out, but I would just walk him back to bed and remind myself I was making easy money. I would always sleep with the TV on because I liked the background noise, and I started having really weird dreams. The TV helped me to know it was only a dream. A few times, I would have like an out-of-body experience where I was dreaming, but in the dream, I was watching myself sleep in the room, and I could see and hear the TV on. Those were the weirdest ones, but I could just shrug it off because I needed the money and it worked out so good for school. One of the scariest nights I had, I was up late studying for a test I had the next day, and I kept hearing weird noises like someone was walking in the hallway. I got up a couple of times to check it out, and nothing was there, so I just shrugged it off of me just hearing things. The hallway was very noisy when you walked down it, so that freaked me out a little that I heard the noise, but no one was there. Also, if you would stand at a certain spot in the doorway, the table next to the bedroom would shake. Well, sure enough, I woke up to the bedside table shaking like someone was walking into the room. At first, I figured it was the old man standing next to my bed again, but when I looked, no one was there. It kept happening every few minutes and I was starting to get mad because I had a big test the next day. So I got up out of bed and yelled as loud as I could, as if they were going to do something, then to do it because I needed to get some rest. Nothing else happened the rest of the night and that was one of the last times anything creepy happened to me while I was there. I never had a feeling of being in danger or anything like that. I think it was probably his wife's spirit that was just there, waiting for her husband to pass. This is a really weird experience I had this past week. My boyfriend and I go to the movie theater at least twice a month and we've been so stoked to see The Nun. So we go on Saturday at 6.30pm showing and then grab dinner at Buffalo Wild Wings after. Sunday morning, as we were getting breakfast, I mentioned a part of the movie. He asked me if I went to see the movie with my mom. I was so confused, but I thought he was messing with me. So I just looked at him and kind of laughed it off. He looked at me strange and asked, how was it? I started getting freaked out and couldn't get words out of my mouth. I told him, you saw it with me. We ate wings after. So confused. Then he said, no, I worked last night. It was my weekend. Now we were both confused. He showed me a text from his boss that was from 937 asking if he could stay until midnight. He worked second shift, which he replied that he could. I thought at first maybe I was dreaming that we saw the movie, but I remember every part of it so obviously I did see it. He asked if I saw it with someone else and just for some reason my memory of it with him since we both wanted to see it so bad, but I remembered I took a video and posted my Snapchat while we were sitting in the theater waiting for the movie to start. It was no longer on my story, but the video is in my Snapchat memories. It even shows that it was taken on the date at 6.23pm. I showed him and now we're both confused. I'm trying to get a grasp on how this is possible or what could have happened. If anyone has any idea, please help me out. This is my first time experiencing something this weird. I'm not sure if this qualifies as a glitch or as some sort of intuition, and I'm sorry if it's in the wrong place, but my experience made me think of stories I've read here. Today, something very strange happened to me and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I feel guilty and so confused. During my daily drive to grab coffee, my navigation in my car kept sending me to random places. No matter how many times I corrected it, it would change the destination the moment I would resume driving, so I just drove my normal route and muted the voice. I know it's weird to use the navigation for a drive that I make so frequently, but it's a comfort thing, I guess. I was nearing my destination when I was suddenly overcome with anxiety and fear. I slowed down to 30 miles per hour in a 45 zone and was overcome with the need to call my partner. 
I told him about how I felt unsafe and scared and that I wanted to turn around and come home. I asked him to stay on the phone with me just in case something bad happened. He tried to comfort me, but that gut feeling wouldn't abate. The driver behind me understandably became frustrated that I was driving so slowly and went around me, and shortly after, we stopped at a red light. I had the worst feeling and my whole body started to hurt. I felt like I'd been hit by a bus or something. It was the most odd sensation. It felt like such a long red light and as it turned green I hesitated a moment. Everything else happened so fast. A truck sped through the red light and demolished the driver's side of the car in front of me. I knew it was going to happen somehow and it would have been me if I hadn't slowed down prior to getting to the light. I felt so guilty. So many people were getting out of their cars running to help but I couldn't. I just pulled into a parking lot and sat there for a while, and then I somehow got home. I'm a 20-year-old female. I live in California with my boyfriend and our German Shepherd. I'm a big believer in the paranormal now, but I didn't used to be. My experience in life, however, have forced me to think differently. The story I'm going to recount takes place when I was 18. I was living with my mom in a small apartment in one of the shadier neighborhoods in Los Angeles. I was working the dinner shift at a 24-hour McDonald's. The child support check stopped a month prior, so I was trying to help my mom make ends meet. The night before the events took place, I was at a friend's house. So after work, I came home with my overnight bag. I opened the front door of my apartment and set my bags down and say hi to my mom who is in the kitchen washing dishes. She doesn't respond, so I greet her a little louder. Still no answer. I shrugged it off and walked into the hallway towards my room. My bedroom is across from my mom's room, so when you are standing in one, you can see the other. When I walked past her room, I froze. My mom was sitting on her bed reading, wearing something different than she had been minutes before. My mom looks up and asks what's the matter, and I asked her how she was there, and she was washing dishes not one minute before. She looks at me puzzled. I wasn't washing dishes, I've been reading for two hours. I tell her that I saw her in the kitchen wearing something different, and she laughs and asks what she was wearing. A blank tank top and blue shorts. She stops laughing. And you said I was doing dishes? She asks. I nodded and asked if she had did them or not. I did, she says. Yesterday. She said she had also been wearing the clothes I described the day before. I had no way of knowing this and I hadn't been home at all the night before. I think about this a lot even today. I'll never know what really happened that day. Something strange happened last night that I cannot logically explain. I'll start by saying that while I am fascinated by the supernatural, I am also a hardened skeptic. This happened while my wife and I were walking home from our friend's house two city blocks away. The street we live on has a large park that stretches four or five blocks across from many rows of Dutch brownstone townhouses. Each building has a stair stoop that reaches into the sidewalk. So my wife and I are walking along the building's side of the street, chatting a little but mostly focusing on getting home because we both had to pee really bad. At one point she turns to me and says, Everything keeps resetting. I laugh and assume she was referring to the fact that the apartments on the left all look very similar. So I make a joke. This must be what eternal torture looks like. The bladder's about to burst, but no matter how fast you walk, you'll never reach the bathroom. She laughs in a way that I can tell she is humoring me, but the look on her face is concerned. I focus in a little more on our surroundings and that's when I noticed that she wasn't kidding. No matter how far we walked, we didn't seem to be getting anywhere. Even describing this is difficult because I'm still not entirely sure what was happening. It felt like we were lagging in a video game. I can remember everything exactly as it was. Trash piled around a tree to the right, an orange traffic cone next to a set of white and brown stairs, a white car parked off to the right side. At first I didn't believe it and I assumed that it was indeed some trick of the eye illusion created by the similarities of the buildings on the left. I continued to make light of the situation, making jokes about how we were stuck in this moment forever. 
that all of the memories weren't real and that the future would never come true. This is actually a joke I make often, but even saying it aloud I started to feel like maybe it was the truth. My wife was trying to stay lighthearted as well, but I could tell she was freaked out. I decided I would try to stop walking entirely in hopes of breaking the loop, but found that I couldn't seem to control my legs. After all, we still had to pee and that was quite the motivation to continue on. It felt like I had no control over the situation. And finally, after what felt like at least a half an hour or more, we began to break out of the cycle. Even then it still felt like we would walk past three houses and then jump back to one. I remember we could finally see our building and despite having increased to a jog, it still took another five or so minutes to reach the stairs. The entire experience felt so surreal and no matter how many times I ran through it in my head, it only makes less and less sense. The walk should have only taken five minutes max and less because of how quickly we were moving. I've read about time discrepancies before, but I've always been skeptical. Now I don't know what to believe. I didn't leave the house at all yesterday, but today I went back to where the stoop started once again and discovered that we had only been a 30 second walk from home the entire time. It was there, but just out of reach. It was so strange. I was around the age of 15 when the story took place and yes, as I stated before, these are true events that happened throughout my life. A little backstory, my mother and father at this time had been divorced for a good 4 or 5 years now, so she was a single mother raising 3 kids on her own as my father was never really in the picture. She had no easy job to say the least. My mother, after my siblings and I went to bed and she was off work, decided to take an hour or so to herself to get on the computer. She of course liked the time, and the late 90s internet and chat rooms were a big thing and well, my mom enjoyed talking and sharing her thoughts with those who seemed to be like-minded people. Fast forward a year, I'm 15 and my mother had many friends and one of the lucky few my mother actually talked to on a personal level was named John. Actually a quick small note, his name wasn't John but I feel a bit weird using his real name and it's more so out of respect for him and you'll see why. John, you see, was dying, and he was in a wheelchair. He had terminal cancer that spread throughout his body. He only was using 10% of his lungs. He had lost his legs to this terrible illness, and being online was his way of being social as he couldn't get out much. He also kept his illness to himself only to confide in a few, like my mother and a few others. So my mom and friend John would talk about things and... When he had a bad day or my mom had a bad day, they would try to cheer each other up by virtual dancing in chat rooms to the WAV sounds they played. Yes, I know it was weird. Oh, and did I mention that every time John would send an instant message hello, he would send her this image. It was almost as if though he would type out the emoji of a rose. He also would tell my mother no matter where he was, he would always watch over my mom and her angels. Two days passed and my mother hadn't heard from her friend. She was concerned but not too concerned as, again, her friend probably was busy with other matters. On the third day, one of his relatives instant messaged her and told her the sad news that John had passed away due to complications of his illness. He also wanted his relative to give her this and he typed out that rose, which by the way he still found a way to give her a rose even in his passing. Now of course, mom wasn't quick to believe so she did some investigating and yes, in fact, she found John's obituary, and in that fact, my mom cried. Another small note, one of my mom's hobbies is painting, and she had shared many of her paintings with him through email. John loved them. This is where things get weird. Three days later, I am sitting on the couch watching TV in the living room. My sister and brother are in bed, and my mom is on the computer in the living room, off on the other side of the room. It's quiet, and then, in the front room of our home that my mother called her studio, we hear a loud thud. Now, we both stop what we were doing and look at each other with that did you hear what I heard look. I just slowly nod. We were in the country in the outer banks of North Carolina, and I don't know what my mom was thinking, but I was afraid that someone was in the house. Then I found myself saying to my mom, maybe it's a mouse. I probably did this to help my mom feel better and at the same time trying to calm myself down. 
I knew though that for a mouse to make that big of a thud, it had to be one of those rats from the movie or book The Princess Bride. You know, R-O-U-S. Mom gets up from the computer, walks over to the closet, and grabs one of my old metal softball bats that she named Bubba and head towards her studio. I follow. When stuff like this happens, I tend to make jokes, call it a coping mechanism, so I comically pictured someone watching this scene on TV throwing popcorn at the screen, shouting not to open the door and calling us dumb. So, yes, dumb as we were, my mom opens the door, quickly flips on the light, bat held high, and ready to swing whomever was in her studio. I watched as she lowered the bat as there was no one there. It was a small studio, so you could clearly see everything in the room. Window, etc. was locked. Nothing. I watched my mother look around and then her eyes stopped on something, and the look on her face was easily described as pure confusion. I followed her gaze to a painting face down on the floor halfway across the room. Her eyes then moved to look behind her to see her easel which had that painting on it before. I only know that the painting was on it because out of my mother's mouth was, I left my painting on the easel before I made dinner. How did it get over here? She looks at me for answers as we stare back at the painting across the room. Right. Weird. I had no words and I watched as my mother moved over to her painting, picked it up, inspected it for damage, seeing none and just put it back on the easel. We don't say any more about it that night and I go to bed and she does too. So on to the next day. My mom and I say nothing about what happened last night and we go on about our days. Again that night my mom's on the computer and I'm in my room. I hear a loud thud coming from the living room where my mom was. This time my siblings and I run to see if my mom was okay. Afraid she might have fallen or something. We found mom staring down in a painting that had been in the wall for years now on the floor. Her face said it all. While she was busy doing her thing on the computer... The painting somehow just fell off the wall. I again, to make people feel better, say, Ah, oh, Mom, it was bound to happen. The nail probably just moved or something. Nothing to worry about. Relief filled my mother's face as she agreed. My siblings went to bed and my mother, of course, asked me to put the painting back up on the wall, which I said I would do and, well, won't lie, I forgot about it that night and left it on the floor. My mother that night before bed decided to leave it on the floor to teach me a lesson and see if I would remember to put it back up on the wall the next day. To my mother's delight, the painting was back up on the wall the very next morning and she was proud of herself and her painting skills as her plan worked. Her darling daughter actually put the painting back on the wall like she had asked. So she found me in the room and said, Honey, I want to thank you for putting that painting back up on the wall. I looked at her and my face looked odd as I said, Mom, I didn't put the painting on the wall. I forgot about it. Mom laughs a little. <laughs> Stop joking like that. I'm not joking, Mom. I didn't put the painting back on the wall. I reply, and now I'm just as confused as she is. The only other person who would be able to put that heavy picture back on the wall was my sister because my brother was too little at the time. So my mom goes to my sister's in the living room and asks her, Hey, dear... Did you get on a chair to put the painting back up on the wall? My sister looked at her and shook her head. No, Mom. Now my mom is thinking us kids got together to play a horrible joke on her, which we assure her we didn't. We were ourselves starting to feel that this was getting a bit creepy. As if a light bulb went off on my mom's brain, she looks around the room and just shouts, All right, John. I know you're here. Thanks for letting me know you're okay, but... You're scaring the kids and me. You don't have to watch over us anymore. Go into the light. Yeah, we thought Mom had lost it. I just stared at her and so did my siblings. Funny thing though, after she said that, nothing like that happened again. Who knows if it was John or maybe something else. I just know. It was really weird. Hi friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, our Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear it featured here on the channel. Be sure to join my Discord also if you want to 
chit and chat with all the crew. If you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.